said, no, you can go on here in Matthew 6, 25. He said, for this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on it. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? The kingdom of God and the world have currencies. Okay? Now, like I said, money in different, in the worldly money in different currencies, in the different kingdoms of the world, dollars, pounds, yens, they promise that they'll supply all of your needs and give you all your desires. That's what you want, isn't it? Now, it's not wrong to want your needs met. Especially, I mean, I talked about the men. You want to supply for your, for your household and everything. There's nothing wrong it's with that. It's responsibility. Yes. And it's not wrong to have desires. It's just a matter of what they're fixed on, right? The currency of the kingdom of God is faith. Because God has promised to supply all of your needs and to give you your desires. But it comes through faith. Mm -hmm. Paul wrote to the Philippians and said, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Not according to your riches, according to his riches. Well, what does he have? Well, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, all the cattle out of a thousand hills. It's all his. And he'll supply every need you have out of those riches. That's what it says, Philippians 4.19. And then in Psalm 37, God says, Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. But I'm going to tell you another truth. He wants to be the desire of your heart. And when you truly delight yourself in the Lord, he will become the desire of your heart. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to binary again. If you're worried about those things, the word of God will be choked to death. And you'll wither away spiritually. And most likely in the natural too. You gotta seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, all the rest will be added unto you. I mean, this is where he started in the in the Beatitudes when he said, you know, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, mm -hmm. for they shall be satisfied. It is the desire of God, your heavenly father, who loves you so much, to bless you with all of these things that you need. And yet so many people they're out there struggling for a paycheck. Because if they don't have that paycheck, they're gonna die. They're gonna start. You know, there's nothing wrong with working. But your purpose for being out there is to be an ambassador for Christ, to bring the knowledge of his presence into every place, to bring the love of God into the lives of others. You're not dependent on a job for your needs. You're dependent on God for your needs. You shouldn't be dependent on those the money that you can get in a paycheck to supply the desires that you have. God will supply your desires. When you allow him to change your desires, and you will be satisfied. That's the truth. Listen, I just want to read a couple of verses to you here. Paul wrote to Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, 7 and 9. For we have brought nothing into the world, so we cannot take anything out of it either. If we have food and covering with these, we shall be content. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. You believe the word of God? I have had this, I, I have said, unfortunately, a number of times in the past few months, as we have traveled uh, a lot, I'm finding very few spirit-filled, Bible-believing Christians who actually believe the Bible, yes. who have a Christian worldview, who approach the things of daily life. You know, <laughs> who will praise things too. spiritually. The Bible, the word of God. Peter says, God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. This, this is more than just spirituality. This is God's instruction on how to live life. What kind of life? Abundant life. Joy-filled life. Amen. That's the kind of life that this, this word of God is instruction for. Because that's God's desire for you. Don't Just, just think about these. I'm going to read from the book of Revelation. I want to look at a couple of congregations here, gatherings of people. I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. And the blasphemy by those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. That's what Jesus spoke to the church in Smyrna in Revelation 2.9. And then he said to the church of Laodicea, because you're lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, 
I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. And you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So the question becomes, are we strong enough to do what's right in the eyes of God? To deny ourselves here on earth and store up our treasure in heaven and not on earth. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints?